Okay, so let's get started a little bit on handout 14A. Now, I just gave you this handout, and um, in class, I don't expect you to write this all down because it's quite a bit. And uh, once you start understanding this diagram, I think you'll thank me, especially when you get into a and P2. You'll really thank me for this because um, it lists all the hormones that are produced by the anterior pituitary gland. You see, it turns out that your pituitary gland is really broken into two, two different um, glands. So we have the front of the pituitary gland called the anterior pituitary, and then we have the back of the pituitary known as the posterior pituitary. That's gonna be 14B, handout 14B. This handout is handout uh, 14A, which is gonna focus on the anterior pituitary gland. Now, your anterior pituitary gland is going to be secreting seven different major hormones. So your anterior pituitary gland is a huge center of homeostasis. Now, some of these we've actually already talked about, okay? So this is not like all brand new stuff. We've talked about some of these hormones that are coming from our anterior pituitary. Um, for example, prolactin or human growth hormone. Now, there are some new ones that I'm going to introduce in this handout. And yes, you are going to be required to know the major functions of all of these hormones. So we're adding quite a few hormones to our hormone list, but you just need to know the function and that they come from the anterior pituitary gland. All right. So let's look at this uh, handout. Now, the first thing that we need to know is that the anterior pituitary gland is controlled by our hypothalamus. So this hypothalamus right here is controlling all the hormones that are being released by the anterior pituitary. It does this with releasing hormones. All right, so in this box, and then I ran out of space, so I put the um, prolactin releasing hormone over here, but these hormones in the box with prolactin releasing are hormones that are made by the hypothalamus. They travel about an inch from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary. And what they're gonna do is they are gonna signal that anterior pituitary to release their hormones. Now this is very specific, all right? So let's start with one that we've already learned and this should just uh, hopefully make sense. So let's start with human growth hormone. So human growth hormone on my diagram is the green pathway, all right? So we've already learned this. The hypothalamus is going to make a hormone called growth hormone releasing hormone. Growth hormone releasing hormone is made in the hypothalamus. It's gonna travel down the infundibulum, down what's called the hypophyseal portal, into the anterior pituitary. It's gonna tell the anterior pituitary gland to secrete human growth hormone. Human growth hormone remember is then dumped into the bloodstream. It's gonna flow down to our liver and it tells the liver to make a second hormone, insulin-like growth factor one. Now, insulin-like growth factor one is responsible for telling all of your tissues to grow. So uh, we learned this back in chapter six where we were talking about bone growth and I gave you human growth hormone back in that chapter. So this is completely 100% review. I can't remember off the top of my head which handout in chapter six this was, but that whole green pathway we've learned. So we have a set of hormones. Now this is crazy because we this is a, a regulation system, right? So you have a hormone telling a hormone 
to release a hormone that causes some kind of process in our body. So in the case of human growth hormone, you have growth hormone releasing hormone telling the anterior pituitary to release growth hormone, but then growth hormone has to flow through the bloodstream to the liver and it tells the liver to produce insulin-like growth factor one, which actually does the job. So we have these hormones built on each other, okay? Let's look at another one that we learned. Another one that we learned is prolactin, the one right next to um, human growth hormone. So if we look at prolactin, it's got a releasing hormone. I had to put it over here because I ran out of space, but it's um, releasing hormone is called prolactin releasing hormone. It's going to be made in the hypothalamus. It's going to flow down to the anterior pituitary, stimulating the anterior pituitary to make prolactin. Prolactin then travels through the bloodstream to the mammary glands, tells the mammary glands to produce milk. So this is another anterior hormone uh, or anterior pituitary hormone, all right? Now, we've got some other ones that I want to mention. Let's look at this red pathway next. Now, we haven't talked about aldosterone yet, I don't think. I think that's in... No, we did. We did talk about... I'm sorry. I get my uh, tests mixed up because they keep flip-flopping tests every semester. So we did talk about aldosterone. So we have talked about this red pathway. So in the red pathway, our hypothalamus makes corticotropin-releasing hormone which tells the anterior pituitary to, to make adrenocorticotropic hormone. Adrenocorticotropic hormone flows through the bloodstream, tells the adrenal glands, right, to produce cortisol, corticosterone, and then aldosterone. And remember, aldosterone is going to be regulating things like your um, potassium levels, your sodium levels, and the blood pressure, if your blood pressure is too low, kicks in, tells your kidneys to um, hang on to that water and raise that blood pressure. So that's just another example. Look at the blue pathway. The blue pathway is your thyroid hormones. So you've got a releasing hormone in the hypothalamus called thyrotropin releasing hormone. Thyrotropin releasing hormone tells the anterior pituitary to release a hormone called thyroid stimulating hormone that dumps into your bloodstream, flows to your thyroid, tells your thyroid to make your thyroid hormones. Thyroid hormones are triiodothyronine and thyroxinine. These hormones are going to be involved in metabolism. So um, remember, metabolism are, is all of those chemical reactions in your body. So um, if you have a uh, slowing down of your thyroid, you have what's called hypothyroidism. People with hypothyroidism uh, feel fatigued, they feel tired, they have trouble losing weight. Uh, it's because their metabolism is slow. They need to get their thyroid hormone stimulated so that they can produce more metabolism in their body. The opposite of that is called hyperthyroidism, and that's when you over-secrete thyroid hormones, so you have a really fast metabolism. People with uh, hyperthyroidism have a hard time keeping weight on. They just they shed weight. They can't gain weight. Um, they have a, a really fast-processing body that's metabolizing really quick. So that's our blue pathway. So look at this. I mean, we've already covered one, two, three, four out of the seven. So we only have three left. And uh, two of them are controlled by one releasing hormone. So let's look at our pink and blue pathway. I did this on purpose because these are our true um, sex hormones, right? We always think of estrogen and testosterone as our sex hormones. And I mean, they are, but these are the ones that control our estrogen and testosterone. So, um, 
our hypothalamus produces a releasing hormone called gonadotropin releasing hormone. Gonads are your reproductive system. So gonadotropin releasing hormone is going to flow from our hypothalamus to our anterior pituitary. And it tells the anterior pituitary to make two hormones. One of them is called follicle stimulating hormone. The other one is called luteinizing hormone. Now, these affect our reproductive organs. Both male and female reproductive organs are controlled by follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Let's do follicle stimulating first. So with follicle stimulating hormone, it tells in males, it tells our testicles to make sperm. Spermatogenesis is making sperm. So follicle stimulating hormone in males makes sperm. Follicle stimulating hormone in females tells our ovaries to grow the follicle containing the egg. Now you're going to learn a lot of this in ANP2 with uh, the reproductive system. And I'm just kind of giving you a big overview, but the ovarian follicle holds the egg and then every month your follicle develops and matures that egg for ovulation. So follicle stimulating hormone does what it's named for. It stimulates the female follicle to grow. That's FSH or follicle stimulating hormone. The second hormone, luteinizing hormone, in males, luteinizing hormone tells our testicles to make testosterone, which is the male sex hormone, right? So luteinizing hormone is going to control the production of testosterone in the male. In females, luteinizing hormone is going to do a couple things. It's going to cause ovulation. So that egg that was developing in the follicle is going to ovulate and that's uh, controlled by luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormone also tells the female uh, ovary to produce estrogen and progesterone. These are the two female sex hormones. We think of estrogen as our female sex hormone. Progesterone is another female sex hormone. And you can always remember progesterone because it is the pregnancy hormone. So it uh, is going to maintain a pregnancy. So just think P for pregnancy, P for progesterone. Now, women make progesterone even when they're not pregnant because basically their body is always preparing for pregnancy. So you're going to be making progesterone whether you're pregnant or not. And that is controlled by luteinizing hormone. Now, not to give anything away here, this is ANP2 stuff, but I love to mention it anyway. When you're thinking about birth control, what you are basically um, manipulating with hormonal birth control is follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone. Because think about this. If we, if we um, change the amounts of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone that's in your body, we can trick the body not to make a follicle. So you don't even develop that follicle with the egg we can trick the body into not ovulating. So uh, most hormonal birth controls do both. So they are going to shut down the follicle stimulating hormone so that your, ovel uh, uh, your uh, ovarian follicle does not develop. If you don't have a maturing egg, you can't get pregnant. And then with the luteinizing hormone, we just shut off the luteinizing hormone, which prevents ovulation. Ovulation occurs because of a spike of luteinizing hormone. If we stop that from happening, you don't ovulate. You don't ovulate. You don't release an egg. You don't get pregnant. So in a nutshell, this is how uh, hormonal birth control works. It's manipulating these hormones that are coming from the anterior pituitary gland. So I think that's some pretty cool stuff to actually understand how that works instead of just, you know, taking your, uh, 
birth control or getting a shot of birth control every you know few months and you don't even understand what happens now you kind of understand how it's working now our final hormone that we need to learn about with the um, anterior pituitary is really easy because there's no known function for it it's called melanocyte stimulating hormone melanocyte stimulating hormone and yes it does have a releasing hormone but i just didn't have space to put it i guess i could have put it up here but um it does have a releasing hormone but we don't know what melanocyte stimulating hormone does in humans now in frogs it actually determines the color of frogs that's why melanocyte stimulating melanocytes are the cells in your skin that uh, secrete melanin which gives you your skin tone in frogs melanocyte stimulating hormone does this but in humans it doesn't seem to have any function I'm sure it has some function but we don't know what it is and so I just put a question mark here so with a human adults it does not stimulate your melanocytes to make melanin so your skin color does not um, or is not affected by this hormone in frogs it is like Kermit the frog is green because of melanocyte stimulating hormone in humans we don't know what it does all right so this is handout 14a I know it's a lot just study it rewrite it do whatever you need but know the basic functions of each of these hormones that includes these hormones down below, which we've talked about uh, throughout the class. This is where there's some cumulative stuff you gotta know. So, I mean, know the basic function of cortisol, corticosterone, remember inflammation, I have it all written here, aldosterone, potassium, sodium, blood pressure. You should know IGF-1 is tissue growth. You should know that thyroid is metabolism. You should know prolactin is milk production. Um, follicle stimulating hormone, sperm in males, follicle in females. Luteinizing hormone, testosterone production in males. Ovulation, estrogen and progesterone production in females. Melanocyte stimulating, no known function. All right, so that's handout 14A. This is a big chunk of the first part of class, so make sure that you study this. Next, we're going to get into handout 14B, which you're going to be uh, hopefully uh, delighted that it's so much simpler than this one. All right, I'll see you in the next video.